Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and before we begin a disclaimer. I do not have a problem with FRSky as a company. I am not a TBS fanboy. I do not really participate in the competition who is better TBS or FRSky or any other um, manufacturer for the RC hobby. I do not will I will not try to bash or rant about Ever Sky in this video because I like to do it, but I am an open source developer and uh, every time someone is trying to pull the open source string in the wrong direction like the, the red light goes off, goes on in my head and I kinda have to say something about this. I did a video when the race flight, flight one drama was happening that was connected with open source. Last year when the TBS tried to bash Ever Sky for cloning the Dipole antenna, I defended Ever Sky and like were helping, at least trying to help, the explaining why no, you can't just make an antenna like that because you cannot really make a copy of the, the, the still the, the, the Dipole design of an antenna. But, but this time um, the situation is kind of like very, very interesting, not interesting, hypocritic, let's say it like that. First of all, um, Eversky. Eversky company makes good equipment and they make bad equipment and they help because they help to develop the OpenTX. According to my information, one of the lead developers or Eversky, oh, sorry, the OpenTX is even employed or at least paid by the uh, FR Sky, and if you try to, let's say, push some changes for your new radio to OpenTX, you kind of have to pay the OpenTX guy for doing the coding. This is fine, completely, absolutely fine. And this is how the open source development should be really working, because developers do not work for free. We get a shitload of money for our, uh, for our let's say, skills and ability to code the stuff from which someone else, by selling the hardware, will be getting money. So I have absolutely no problems about the fact that the OpenTX is charging for doing stuff for you. Completely, absolutely fine. This is great. This is super great. Also, I'm... Let's say the... The whole aspect of China cloning everything is like... You know, I do not have a huge problem about this. I do not also think that this is 100%, let's say, ethical and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm pragmatic about this and uh, I do not think that direct copy of a copy is, is good because it's not. I'm, for example, absolutely not advising anyone to buy cheap clones from China or flight control and stuff like that because it, it, the quality is shitty and everything like that. On the other hand, I understand that by copying some of the ideas of the other ideas, we are really like creating a new stuff because if everything would be closed, then there would be no competition and uh, the prices would be much, much, much higher. So, to some extent, taking the not copying, but taking the example of someone else is a very good thing that really drives our current society towards like destroying the earth very, very soon. Never mind, never mind. What's happening? Ever Sky has a lot of radios. They are the most popular radio transmitter manufacturers that is currently on the market. The Futaba and, and all the others were, they let's say, kind of lost the race. And a few years ago, the Ever Sky came into the market and right now has the majority, majority of the share. Still, there are some mm, cheaper manufacturers like Flysky or who else there is? Uh, who else besides Flysky and Jumper? No, Jumper will go into the Jumper in a moment. But Flysky and they, let's say, make the cheaper and uh, slightly worse quality radios or, for example, this, this last thing I have over here. And some time ago, the new company appeared on the market. They are called the Jumper and they are also making radios. And they made uh, Jumper T12, which uh, some reviewers on the internet said that this is a very good radio, very cheap, which, which was, let's say, the copy of the hardware idea 
of the FR Sky QX7. I'm not sure. I, I never had the radio, so I don't know how much of the copy it was. Truth to be told, it was able to run OpenTX as a target called the QX7. So, on the hardware level, it was compatible with the QX7. Was it a direct copy? I will not go into this detail yet, because I just don't know. I... There is... Now, now there is also a competition from Jumper towards the, let's say, one of the best radios mm, around, which is Eversky X10, not S, without S, because the gimbals are different, which is called Jumper T16. Jumper T16 like this one over here. And this radio is also getting a very good opinions on the internet, because, for example, the, the Schwerbald will likes it, the Kabap FPV likes it. I kind of also like it because it's really nice, nice, nice radio, nice design, nice, nice LCD screen and, and everything like that. Um, I'm not using this yet because I just got it like a few days ago and I just had no time to really like know what are good things and bad things about this design. So we will not go into this this way. And now. Now, the Ever Sky, the company, by the way, which probably was very, very inspired by the other com was took a lot of inspiration from the other companies when they started doing their Taranis. Oh, I had no idea. I really had no idea um, that they were inspiring, inspired so much by the others and the, the TBS antenna stuff. Never mind. They, right now, are trying to push the... Uh, efforts, no, the Jumper T16 out of the market. For example, you cannot buy this radio on Banggood. Why? Because they wrote Banggood, if you will sell a T16, we will have, let's like, no, say, do not <coughs> give you a good discount on our uh, radios. Of course, who is bigger? The one wins. Now, um, two days ago, I watched the Kabap FPV uh, video about the whole situation and the letters that are supposedly sent from the Ever Sky to the retailers, where the Ever Sky said to the retailer that if you will continue to sell jumper radios, we will make you pay more for our, our hardware, so you will, of course, earn less. And there is a long letter, I'm not sure if this is really like 100%, with some statements from people that are saying that they are like, they don't like that the jumper makes copy of something and stuff like that, and the T16 is direct copy without bringing any additional value towards the T X10S, and that T12 was a direct copy of the QX7, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, very not structured and really the, the, the whole, as the letter as a whole does not make much sense. Including, including the statement that A, um, Jumper TX by forking open T, Jumper XYZ by forking open TX and making their own firmware based on the OpenTX is breaking some magical GPL regulations and that they are like stealing because they made a direct copy. T16 is a direct copy, direct copy, but still needs a different, uh, different, slightly different uh, software, but without some of the functions removed, so instead of bringing any additional value towards the customer. And this is why the, the OpenTX did not include the jumper target, the jumper firmware inside of the OpenTX. And as a guy who knows this and that about the open source and stuff like that, I have to make a few statements. <sighs> this is T16, which is supposed to be direct copy of the Eversky 10XS. What a coincidence! 10XS. Do you see any, like, are they the, the same? No, kinda, kinda not. I own this one, I use this one, I think this is the best radio on the market, and now I got this one. So, in the future video, I will be able to compare both radios hardware, if this is really a direct copy, or did just the Jumper TX just made a hardware that is on the software level compatible with the uh, X10S. Because the fact that it's run, it's able to run the same firmware, OpenTX, does not mean that it's a copy. Because, let's, 
like a look at the flight controllers. Come on, like, like flight controller made by this company, that company, and majority of them runs on the Omnibus F4 target. Coincidence? I don't think so. Because, no, mm, you can, and this is fully like okay, make a different, different radio, for example, in this case, radio, to be compatible with the software. You, you cannot make a patent, the patent, yeah, you cannot make a patent on the uh, pins to which on the CPU level the gimbals are connected. Also, from what I know, the FR Sky does not have any patents on the uh, on the X10S because come on, what you can patent over here? Gimbals connected to the flight, to the, to the CPU and some inputs, outputs. Come on, this is like people are making radios and the, 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 the LCD is the same. <sighs> come on. It's, it's only in the LCD. It's only in the LCD. Yes, this radio is simpler. This radio is simpler than this one. It does not have internal module. It does not have the, uh, I think, MP3 possibility to play or not. I'm not sure about that. It does not uh, have uh, the Bluetooth built-in and stuff like that. But even by just looking from the outside, well, it's really hard to tell hard to call this radio a direct copy of the Nixes. But what's more important about this? The, in the letter there was a statement that OpenTX says that Jumper TX has broken the GPL by making a fork of OpenTX. And I call this a bullshit. Huge bullshit. Why? This is beautiful. This is beautiful. First of all, um, OpenTX is an open source licensed under the GPLv2. And that means that as long as you are compliant with GPLv2, you are good to go. The question is, was they compliant with GPLv2? We will go into that uh, into the moment. Now maintainer of the open source project, like in this, uh, this case the guys from the OpenTX, has full right to refuse to merge whatever they want. People can propose, Jumper had a right to propose the support on the OpenTX for their radios and they had the full right to reject it because they are the maintainers of the project called OpenTX but only on the project called OpenTX, while the code of the OpenTX is under the open source. If, when well, uh, OpenTX rejected to bring support to the Jumper TX T16 and T12, they had full right to do it. But because the code of the OpenTX is GPLv2, the Jumper had full right to make their own changes to it and start distributing this as their own. If you want to make your own version of the OpenTX, you have full right to do it. You go to the GitHub, click uh, clone, change the name, change the logo, change the bitmap. You have your own OpenTX. Of course, your firmware will be not distributed by the channels of the OpenTX, but you can do it. This is 100% fully legal. Now, now both Sky and the OpenTX are stating that JumperTX did something wrong. No. If the code is open source, that means that the whole code OpenTX is open source Everyone, absolutely everyone, has a full right to take it. And now, FRSky and OpenTX cannot take some of the features and the code they developed over there and make it their own. This is not OpenGL. How OpenGL? Uh, OpenGL, what am I talking? GPL uh, is working. Everything inside of the OpenTX software is licensed in exactly the same way under the GPL license. So no, OpenTX had a full right to, did what, to do what they did and this is 100% legal, fine and like I said, everybody can do it because it, this is how open source and GPL 
is working. It's either all or nothing. There are, of course, few caveats about the GPL because, um, for example, the author, the author, the author has the copyright towards the code he, he made into the project. That means if, for example, you um, made a change and they, it was accepted by the OpenTX project, you have the copyright towards this code. You, not the OpenTX, but you. Also, because of how the GPL license is working, you cannot easily change the license and from now on say that right now it's closed, you cannot use it anymore. No. Mm -mm. It is theoretically possible to change the GPL license into something else, but only if all the <laughs> owners, all the contributors, everyone inside of the code base will agree to it. And because it, it, it almost it almost never happened that every single of the contributors and owners of the copyright for the code they committed into the repository uh, usually agrees to change the license to something more restrictive. It never really happens. It's virtually impossible. You, as you, if you are the only one inside, you're the only committer, then perhaps you can do something. But if sometimes someone from the external committed everything, no, 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 the code is there, it stays open source. Of course, you have the right to um, um, publish the same code as the GPL and something else, but if you publish something once as a GPL, it more or less stays as a GPL. Even if you'll be able to pull the change of the license, everything was published before the change of the license, stays GPL, because this is how the, the open source, the, the GPL license is really, 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 really working. The only let's say the legal obligation um, behind the GPL is that after you forked and made your own version and you made a public release, this is very important, public release because you can do use it internally without releasing anything and really like keep it hidden, but if you made a public release you have to make the source codes available. And yes, Jumper did that. It's open. You can go to the GitHub and have all the changes they are of that they did. This is the public release. They never stole the copyright of the previous commit repository because the his repository history stays there. Every single commit before the jumper TX fork the open TX stays there. So copyright stays with the original author of the code. You might ask, uh, so what? Maybe I will remove some commits because someone said that. Uh, he is not agreed, so I will remove his commit and it's done. And it's gone, I can change the license, I can close the code. No! Well, yes, in some of the cases, yes. But if there was a derivative code based on the code you want to re remove from the repository, this derivative code of the original code is also dpl and still the original author has something to say about this. So, no. Jumper TX had a full right to do what they did. They can, and this is even like the open source GPL is inviting you to do this. And because the open TX is under the GPL license, open TX, no, no, because open TX is under the GPL the license, the, nobody can, not re, can, can say a bad word about this. And you cannot, like the guys from the open text, no, but this is radio, they stole our work and this is our work. No, 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 no. They did not stole anything. Everything is fine. The GPL license was not broken. They keep the copyright of your work and they distribute it. They, ev they even have a right to sell it, actually, to sell it, because still, according to GPL, you can sell it. It's fine, it's fantastic, it's outstanding. You cannot say that they stole for you, because they didn't. And also the, uh, the argument that, the, for example, T16 is the less value than the to X10S and we are not supporting this because it's not bringing anything new. And, well, sorry guys, and what, what, what's the new value of, for example, QX7 comparing to X90? It's worse radio than the X90 on 10XS. So, no, 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 once again, once again. I understand, I understand that the FR Sky might feel something like 
a problem that they sponsored the development of OpenTX and then someone came and forked it. But this is how the open source worked. This was clear from the very beginning when you started to invest in this product. That anyone, literally anyone, can go and get this work and use it. They cannot claim that this is theirs. No, 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 no. But they can use it. It was clear from the very, very, very beginning. Also, the OpenTX guys have absolutely no right to say that Open T the jumper cannot take the code. Because they can. This is the ground foundation of the open source and how it's working. So, and FRSky, really last year you were accused of copying uh, TBS and now you are accusing someone that this is a direct copy of this one. Well, come on. Really? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. No. Let's not do it like this. Either way, because I have both of the radios, I will try to, in the next few days, I will try to do a teardown of uh, this little thingy and see what's uh, happening inside of it. And also we might be able to compare if this is really internally uh, the direct copy of the of, This is direct copy of this one, like someone is stating. But like I said in the beginning, the fact that you made your own hardware compatible with um, on the software level with different hardware does not mean it's a direct copy or that even it's copy. If the PCB is different, then the hardware is different. Of course, maybe the same LCD is used, but the, the LCD is only an LCD. It's a component you can buy. You, nobody says that you stole the LCD because using the same LCD. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately we have like... <laughs> I would have to say not very pleasant uh, situation where the one company that has history of uh, copying, cloning, however we're gonna call it now, says that different company is stealing from them by doing probably, probably the, the just that something what they do. But this is fine. This is fine. So um, not nice. No, 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 very, very not nice. Um, oh, they will not like me now. I don't think they ever liked me very much. I kind of criticized them probably too long and they have a history of like not liking people who are criticizing this, but who gives? Um, to make things 100% clear, I paid for this. This is my private radio. I think this is one of the best radios around. It's fantastic. The gimbals are incredible. This radio though, I got this radio from Jumper, but not as a Paweł Spychalski the YouTube channel, but as a Paweł Spychalski the one of the developers of the INAV. So this is completely unrelated. I even have to pay something for this because unfortunately it got into the customs and I have to pay taxes and stuff like that. So I kind of think that I paid and they did not pay me to set what I said. The, I did it because I hate hypocrisy and I hate when someone is trying to pull the open source into the wrong direction. And because I because of how much I'm contributing towards the open source project, especially INAV, but not only. And that I really like... <laughs> no, this is not working like that. Okay, um, that was an unfortunately longish video again. If you did not watch the, the Kabab's FPV about the Ever Sky and Jumper, the link is in the description. Also, the Joshua Bardwell during the review of the Jumper said uh, a few words about the, the whole situation, so you might also want to watch it. And uh, stay tuned for more on this pretty interesting, but worse than this. This, this is worse. This is really, honestly, this is worse. I will not switch it because the, I don't like the gimbals. The plastic is cheapish. The plastic over here, you can just like, eh, and uh, there's no internal module and stuff like that. So, interesting design, not better than this. I don't really think it's a direct copy, but we, oh, it's not direct copy. No, come on, no, the different form factor. Come on, come on, let's. Right. Okay, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.